I now want to give the floor to Mr. Huan Xia. Monsieur le Président. President, distinguished members of the Security Council, it is for me an honor to introduce to you all the report of the Secretary General on the implementation of the Peace, Security and Cooperation Framework Agreement for the Democratic Republic of the Congo and the region. I would like to start this statement on an optimistic note because the Great Lakes region is, more than ever before in recent history, resolutely committed to pursuing stability for itself. Important steps have been taken in the implementation of the framework agreement, thanks in particular to the peaceful transfer of power that we saw in the DRC, and thanks also to the reaffirming by the leaders of the region of their determination to tackle together the existing obstacles standing in the way of the desired stability. After taking up his office, the president of the DRC, Felix Chisikede, committed to working closely with his counterparts in the region in order to restore peace and security in the eastern part of the DRC. This diplomatic overture was hailed by all the heads of state that I have met in the region, who assured me of their determination to support and build on this spirit of cooperation. Against this backdrop, the tripartite and quadripartite meetings convened thanks to the good offices of the Congolese and Angolese presidents respectively, Angolan, Angolan presidents respectively, have fostered a rapprochement between Uganda and Rwanda with the signature of a Memorandum of Understanding or MOU between these two brother countries, Uganda and Rwanda. I would like to take this opportunity to pay tribute to the efforts of the governments of Uganda and Rwanda as they have sought to reduce tensions and to restore relations and ties of fraternal cooperation. I must also thank Angola and the DRC for their determination to promote dialogue and to promote the peaceful resolution of the disputes between the countries in the region. I call upon the Security Council to encourage all of the parties to stay the course on these efforts. The determination to pursue cooperation at the security level culminated recently in consultations between the Defence and Security Services of the DRC and of its neighbouring countries, in particular the Defence and Security Forces of Burundi, Uganda and Rwanda, with the aim of strengthening their cooperation to counter armed groups operating in the eastern part of the DRC. These initiatives underscore the importance of a regional and holistic approach to address the security threat which looms over the region. Distinguished members of the Security Council, in light of my interactions and my findings to date, I am in a position to be able to reassure you that there is a golden opportunity here before us to address the deep-rooted causes of the instability in the region. So we must seize that golden opportunity and build upon it to strengthen regional cooperation in order to allow the people of this particular part of the world to be able to better tap the riches and wealth of their region. To that end, we need to strengthen development programmes and accelerate the process of regional integration. By playing on the correlation between peace and security on the one hand and development and a better distributed prosperity and wealth on the other, that the region will be able to set itself on the path of change and move away from a reactive approach to conflict to be able to engage in a proactive approach of peace, security and development. There are, of course, many challenges that still lie ahead. The insecurity that uh, stems from the presence and activities of armed groups in the east of the DRC, and I'm speaking here of both foreign as well as local armed groups, is a major concern. Moreover, illicit mining activities and illicit trading in natural resources fuel an illegal economy which supports the activities of these armed groups. Forced displacements of populations due to the prevailing insecurity are still a frequent occurrence. Moreover, efforts will need to be stepped up in order to ensure the protection and promotion of human rights, in order to ensure uh, justice, greater equity and more respect for the dignity of the human being. 
On this particular point, President, distinguished members of the Security Council, I'd like to take this opportunity to share with you some initiatives that have been spearheaded by my own office, together with the other guarantors of the framework agreement, initiatives to support and accompany the signatory countries. In terms of security cooperation to tackle and neutralise the spoiler forces in the region, the guarantors of the framework agreement, together with the national oversight and follow-up mechanism of the DRC have been facilitating consultations and discussions between the heads of the intelligence services of the DRC, Burundi, Uganda, Rwanda and Tanzania. This initiative builds on the guidance provided at the most recent summit of the regional mechanism for oversight and follow-up of the framework agreement and is intended to strengthen the climate of trust between the countries and to promote a common approach towards tackling the foreign armed groups operating in the east of the DRC. Within the framework of these discussions and that initiative, my own office is engaged in consultations with the countries concerned on the subject of non-military measures that can support and beef up military operations. Although a military response to the spoiler efforts of armed groups in the east of the DRC is, of course, crucial going forward, at least in the short term, complementary programmes also need to be rolled out with the support of the international community to support processes such as voluntary disarmament, repatriation and reintegration of the members of these groups in their countries and communities of origin, as well as for the rehabilitation of affected communities. Cross-border projects for job generation and creation for young people should also be implemented. Regional cooperation and integration are seeing a fresh impetus of late. The DRC, Burundi, Uganda and Rwanda have expressed their interest in building on a political conversation on the issue of natural resources in order to leverage same for shared prosperity across the region. My country is also supporting the pre preparations for the second round of the Conference on Trade and Investment in the Great Lakes region, which will take place in March of next year in Kigali, Rwanda. The President of Rwanda, Paul Kagame, has reassured me of his determination to hold this conference and make it a success. I call upon the distinguished members of this Security Council to support this initiative, which will highlight the important role to be played by the private sector in our quest for lasting peace in the region. Judicial cooperation and cooperation in the fight against impunity have been beefed up thanks to the adoption last May by the Ministers of Justice of the region of the Nairobi Declaration on Justice and Good Governance. Follow-up actions have been undertaken in order to ensure the implementation of the provisions of said declaration, including through the strengthening of judicial cooperation between the signatory countries. Promoting the role of women, of young people and of civil society writ large is one of my priorities. My office, in partnership with UN Women, the African Union, FemWise Africa and the ICGLR, is leading joint solidarity missions the purpose of which is to lobby for the participation of women in decision-making bodies and in political peace processes. We are also working together to encourage our partners to put an end to a culture of impunity, particularly when it comes to gender-based violence. My country is working in close cooperation with civil society in order to ensure that we have an inclusive and coordinated approach to support pacification and development efforts in the region. Consultations between the framework agreement, guarantors and civil society took place in September last month, in other words, in Nairobi, and culminated in recommendations aimed at promoting a better degree of involvement of civil society in political processes and in the drive to ensure gender equality in the region. I think this gives me a perfect opportunity to flag for your attention, the fact that the DRC will shortly succeed Uganda in heading up the regional follow-up mechanism for the framework agreement and that the next uh, summit of the mechanism will therefore take place in Kinshasa. President, distinguished members of the Council, I think we have good grounds for hope 
and because hope is in the offing, we should redouble our efforts to support the region to build on the current positive change, the grass shoots of which we're currently seeing. I would like to conclude the statement by thanking the Security Council members for their very helpful guidance as I began my mandate. I remain at your disposal and look forward to your further input so that together we can accompany and support the countries of the region in their push towards a lasting peace and shared prosperity. Thank you very much. I want to thank Mr. Shia for your briefing. 